How's it going guys? So today we're going to be taking a look at Star Wars The Force Unleashed. And this is actually my second playthrough of the game ever. Yeah, that's right. I only played it once when it first came out back in 2008. Uh, at the end of 08, uh, I played this game. I remember liking it. Uh, I always thought it was a cool adventure. A uh, really cool part of the uh, Star Wars lore. And, uh, you know, I remember most of it. But a lot of people throughout the years, you know, especially now since Disney purchased Star Wars, were going back and saying, I wish there could be a game like The Force Unleashed. And it was coming up time and time again. And people were actually like, quoting it as being like their favorite, not like one of their favorites, but their favorite favorite star wars game and i was like really like was the game really that good like i remember liking this game but i remember like always preferring jedi outcast and the kotor games knights of the old republic uh, you know so but 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 maybe there was more to this game than i realized the first time around you know sometimes you know you're not expecting certain things when you play a game you don't really expect to see what's coming towards you you know it's like watching a movie like watching like the star wars movies how many times have you watched those films and you notice things on screen you notice dialogue that you didn't notice the time before because your mind's not really focused on it so that's how a lot of times how it could be with video games too you might not know what to expect you might not appreciate everything the first time around so sometimes a second playthrough a second viewing whatever the form of media may be the music a second listen you know you never know what you're going to think or see or hear the second time around so guys, without any further ado, I bring to you my Star Wars Force Unleashed Retrospective. In 2014, Disney destroyed this game. No, literally, they did. All expanded universe material was now considered to be non-canon and therefore irrelevant. As if it never happened. That meant that Knights of the Old Republic, Jedi Outcast, Shadows of the Empire never happened. I mean, I know they did. I saw them. I played them. I experienced and savored these genuine, authentic, astounding Star Wars experiences that they were, are, and always will be. How could Disney just tell us that their brand, the Star Wars, was the only one that mattered and that the creative minds behind all the great Star Wars expanded universe content was now obsolete? Authors like Timothy Zane, all the developers who worked on the games, they were told their stories were to be relegated to the dustbin of time that would now be labeled as legends. Now, one of the last big video games released in the Expanded Universe was The Force Unleashed and its sequel two years later. Before we experienced a near five year drought of any blockbuster Star Wars video game. The Force Unleashed would introduce us to a story of a boy named Starkiller who had his father killed during the Great Purge of the Jedi by Darth Vader and is taken under the wing of Vader himself in shocking fashion. Vader is the apprentice of the Emperor, but he is secretly training Starkiller to do his bidding and eventually usurp the Emperor along with Vader in classic Sith fashion. It's an interesting story and it takes place during a fascinating time period in Star Wars between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. By the way, does that name Star Killer sound familiar to you? Star Killer was actually going to be the name of Luke Skywalker in the early development of A New Hope. An interesting parallel considering that Luke is Vader's son, but Star Killer plays the role of a son from a certain perspective. Vader did raise him, train him, and teach him basically all he knows. Starkiller actually doesn't seem that evil when he pals around with his droid proxy. He has a playful Luke Skywalker charm to him. He ruthlessly dispatches enemies, blinds a Jedi Master by the name of General Coda, and kills another Kazon Paratus. He even gets the hots for his Imperial pilot Juno, but he still remains on the path 
Vader set for him. This is the only life he has ever known, and in the way, he is innocent due to his ignorance. Though he is committing awful violence and atrocities, from a certain point of view, he is only obeying the wishes of his adoptive father. I love when Star Wars makes you think about the parallels between good and bad and how individuals can be manipulated so easily based on certain situations and mindsets. About a quarter of the way through the game, Vader reveals that one of the Emperor's spies has been tracking you and their plan to overthrow the Emperor has been compromised as Vader goes on to beat the ever-living piss out of you in a fantastic cutscene where the Emperor watches on. This is some interesting context when looking back at Return of the Jedi. We now see why the Emperor seems wary of Vader being swayed by his feelings for his son in that film because Vader has already betrayed him in the past, but secretly Vader revives you and tells you to cut your ties to the past and has taken the liberty of preparing to terminate your pilot Juno. Starkiller decides he cares for her too much and rescues her, defying Vader. Vader now expects you to rally the Rebellion to help with the destruction of the Empire. It's very interesting to me that Vader seems to not want to lead the Empire, but rather destroy it. I suppose Vader realizes that political rule is not what he wants. He never does state fully what he wants. I mean, Vader joined with the Emperor to save his wife, and really nothing more. He's most likely realizing this is more than what he wanted, Way more, in fact. It's at this time you can really see the conflict of Starkiller, and he actually wants to help the Rebellion. Even though this is merely a ploy perpetrated by Vader, we see how the light is coming back to Starkiller for the first time since he was a small boy. We even befriend the very man we blinded earlier, General Coda, and save Senator Argana from a corrupted Padawan, all helping to tell a story of self-redemption and a journey back to the light. So we'll get back to the story in a bit, but I want to talk about the gameplay here. This is a fast-paced hack-and-slash game with some platforming elements and a host of force powers. Also, we get to level up our character RPG style. There was a similar idea applied to Jedi Academy released five years earlier, but this is more fleshed out. Unlike that game, it goes beyond force powers and you can now learn new lightsaber techniques. I think they did an astounding job implementing all these moves, but sometimes it's a bit overwhelming and I can't always remember what button combinations I need to press to perform certain moves and have to consult the pause menu for further instructions. But that's really my fault and not a flaw because this adds tons of spice and variety to the combat. In addition, for the first time in a Star Wars game, you have the ability to lift and throw objects as well as stormtroopers and other enemies. It's a real blast chucking these objects at enemies and especially throwing enemies around like ragdolls. You really feel all powerful and that you are in full control of the force and you feel like you can do anything. You feel like a powerful Sith Jedi character in this game. But I like how the game shows restraint by not allowing you to throw objects that would be too large. You can lift larger objects, but they are harder to manipulate, showing that these objects have weight to them. Though the combat is faster paced than a game like Jedi Outcast, it thankfully shows some restraint that still keeps things grounded in terms of the rules of the Star Wars universe and lore. As far as the lightsaber combat goes, I still prefer Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academies because it just feels more weighted and tighter. Force Unleashed may be faster, but it feels looser and it just overall feels better to swing your lightsaber in Outcast and Academy. Unleashed definitely offers up more variety and you can do more with your lightsaber, but I personally prefer better feeling combat to more styles of combat quality over quantity. It's still good, but it's just a personal preference that I'm sure many disagree with. Now, on the topic of variety, the levels don't fare as well, as we get repeat levels. Though with different layouts and challenges, we go through Kajik twice, Raxus Prime twice, Felucia twice, 
it would have been nice to get some different planets, but Kashyyyk is totally different, and you were only here briefly in the opening level, and now it's completely taken over by the Empire, so it's basically unrecognizable. Felucia offers a nice second act with the Sarlacc Pit and a revamped aesthetic. But Raxus Prime is a little too similar with nothing that different to set it apart from its earlier incarnation. And this isn't exactly a lengthy adventure. Plus, these revisits are superiorly designed and more fun to travel through because they always offer more and plus you're more powered up by the time you get there. Raxus Prime is a junkyard and during the first visit you will fight against the most difficult boss in the game, Kazan Paratus, who has gone mad and constructed the Jedi Council out of spare junk parts and when they get damaged he reacts in horror which is hilarious. This guy is just fast and annoying, plus you're underpowered at this point and it can be hard to just survive the fight. During the revisit, we must contend with one of the most agonizing parts but thrilling tasks of the game, pulling a Star Destroyer straight out of the sky. Journal Coda is giving you instructions, walking you through this on the comlink, but it's always a harrowing experience because I'm not sure if the instructions are, in, are entirely accurate because it takes so many attempts and I've checked numerous walkthroughs for tips on this and everyone seems perplexed as well. You pull it down a bit, then TIE Fighters attack, and then you pull it down some more, but as you fight the fighters, the Star Destroyer starts to level out again, resulting in what feels like one big obnoxious loop. The end result is satisfying, but this part just feels overly tricky and unclear. Interestingly enough, I had completely forgotten about how Proxy turns into Darth Maul on Raxus. For some reason, I felt more shocked by this this time around because I didn't even remember this moment from 12 years ago. Oh, and a word on Proxy, he is an entertaining character because he is not only programmed to help you, but also to try and kill you. Kind of seems at odds with each other, doesn't it? I guess that's the point, and he is capable of transforming into basically anyone as he proves here. Felucia is the planet we briefly see in Revenge of the Sith when Jedi Master Ayla Sakura gets gunned down by clone troopers, and we would see more of it in the Clone Wars cartoon. I enjoy this level more during the revisit because you get to enter the Sarlacc Pit stomach and it's a very creative and original moment. Kashyyyk is actually the level you begin the game on and you get to play as Darth Vader. And let me tell you, it is very hard playing this game again and having to not only give up the ability to play as my favorite Star Wars character of all time, but giving up the ability to perform all of these Force powers. And I kind of forgot how I felt about this the first time playing this game. This is only my second playthrough for this capture session. You basically are sent back to square one. And Star Killer's a good character and everything, but hey, he's no Darth Vader. The sheer power, style, and coolness of Vader dominating the Wookiees in this opening level is just too cool for school, and I think in many ways it might actually be my favorite part of the game. Now hold on, this is not a knock on this game, I like the Force Unleashed, but I think it is entirely possible that this game blows its load in the opener. But the word I use, style, the game has tons of it and it's apparent right from the start. Maneuverability feels elegant and responsive and these visuals can be stunning at times. As Vader fights against Starkiller's father in the beginning, TIE Fighters are crashing all around you and this feels like one enormous war. The shine on his armor and the flow of his cape, it looks spectacular. Throughout the Force Unleashed, there's plenty of moments where the visuals are just striking and cool to look at, such as the surface near the Sarlacc Pit on Felucia, the individual floating debris pieces on Raxus Prime, or when you're bringing down the Star Destroyer as I mentioned before. 
The world feels big, used and abused, and doesn't feel overly clean and polished, which would make it feel too sterile. The visuals are perfect for Star Wars. Towards the end of the game, we are once again betrayed by Vader as we learn we were but a pawn in Vader's game to overthrow the Empire and that he never had any plans to keep you as his apprentice. This is the moment Starkiller basically becomes a full on good guy now having no ties to Vader at all. He is basically a character free of conflict for the first time since he was a small boy. We then go on a suicide mission on the Death Star to put an end to Vader and the Emperor once and for all. I really like this cutscene before you hop off the ship where Juno asks you if she will ever see you again and you tell her probably not. She kisses you and it turns out to be a promise kept because you never do. This is something that's very reminiscent to Rogue One and Jin Orso's acceptance that she is on a suicide mission now playing this game 12 years after its release. It wouldn't be crazy to say that perhaps Rogue One drew creative inspiration from this game, as it was and is a massively popular Star Wars game, and even the very concept of stealing and delivering Dead Star plans was a concept devised in the game Dark Forces. An example of Disney drawing on the past to rewrite Star Wars history. I would call it plagiarism to a degree if Disney, you know, didn't own the property. I really love this last level as we journey through the Dead Star. It's a very long level and a very tasking one, especially in the first few moments where you have to contend with two ATSTs and a buttload of stormtroopers. Can we say a word about these? Purge troopers, holy sh**. These things are just merciless and a real pain to deal with. I game over it here so many times it felt like Jabba the Hutt was sitting on my chest and laying out some of the biggest atomic galactic farts because this sequence is brutal. After this things get a lot less strenuous as you will travel through the cannon corridors and have to avoid the laser blast that will kill you in an instant. We then reach Vader and to be honest he doesn't feel as tough as the other bosses because at this point you've increased your health and added new techniques to your arsenal. After defeating him you will then receive a choice of killing Vader or saving General Coda. I've never picked the dark side ending and I ended up choosing the light side path as I did during my first playthrough which is in fact the cannon ending. The fight against the Emperor isn't too bad either really and you're given plenty of opportunities to regain health by defeating his royal guards that charge onto the battlefield periodically. After the boss fight the Emperor ends up gaining the upper hand and killing you. In what other game would your main character die? Yes, it fits into the story so it's impossible to knock from a storyline perspective, but funny nonetheless. At the end, we see the rebellion beginning to take shape as Senator Organa and Princess Leia credit Starkiller's sacrifice as their inspiration and their symbol is revealed. The moment that really gets to me is as Juno reflects on Starkiller's death, Coda approaches her and she asks him why Coda helped them despite Starkiller trying to kill him and he mentions that when Starkiller approached her help he sensed good in him and it was his love for Juno. I feel like it just all comes together nicely and we feel the lasting legacy Starkiller left on the Star Wars universe. There really was a great deal of character development on display here as a pawn became a hero, a Sith became a Jedi and overall becoming a symbolic martyr for a revolution that would send shockwaves down the line and change the very fate of the universe. Damn, Starkiller was important. 
Moments like this make me sad for the death of the original Expanded Universe because these were original moments and experiences that we felt as Star Wars fans. We cherished these great gameplay and story experiences that built off the same emotions and love we have for the films. And for Disney to come along and say that stuff didn't happen and we are going to give you some new stuff especially when Disney has not done a very good job of releasing Star Wars games in a timely fashion and letting established and beloved Star Wars video game franchises to rot or go to waste, I find it to be quite outrageous. It would take until 2019 with Jedi Fallen Order for us to get that same magic we felt for a game like The Force Unleashed. It angers me so much, it's enough to push me to the dark side, folks. I can feel your anger. Play it, experience it, and cherish it. If you've never played The Force Unleashed because new Star Wars games are scarce nowadays, well, if we get more games like Jedi Fallen Order, then maybe it won't be so bad. But there doesn't seem to be a huge, massive plan for Star Wars games like there was back during the heyday of George Lucas-controlled LucasArts Star Wars. Star Wars games are just not released as frequently as they used to. And that's odd because we just finished a new trilogy, have The Mandalorian gearing up to release its second season this October, and a Obi-Wan show on the horizon. Maybe I'm wrong, and I hope I am, and I probably am, because they did just announce Rogues, but the golden days of Star Wars gaming with annual and multiple releases per year may be behind us. However, doubts aside, Jedi Fallen Order does give me hope that Star Wars games are getting back on track, and that the Star Wars property can be used for more than just multiplayer-centric video games. So yeah, there you go, guys. So, you know, I want to just let you know that I think that Star Wars does have a bright future, don't get me wrong. You know, actually right now as I'm making this video, I, I am playing uh, Jedi Full and All. That's one of the reasons why I was bringing this up in this, uh, this review, this retrospective. Uh, because I would like to see more of this style of game. And this game does have quite a few similarities uh, to Force Unleashed, to be quite honest. So, you know, it's just, yeah, I can't help but feel like I felt like back in like the early to mid 2000s, like they were releasing Star Wars games like crazy. And I can't help but feel that they slowed down, you know, ever since George Lucas sold the property, I can't help but feel, you know, we've gotten the Battlefront games and Jedi Fallen Order, and that's about it. I mean, like, what other Star Wars games? Okay, they announced uh, Rogues, which I'm happy about. You know, I do like the Rogue Squadron series, and obviously this game is going to draw inspiration from those classic games. So, you know, we've got a lot to look forward to. I just wish that there was a little bit more, maybe that's being greedy, but, you know, I can't help but feel like if we're used to something, if we lived during a time where something was happening, uh, I, I can't see, like, why it should be less than, you know, like, why can't we have more or about the same? You know, I hate, like, when things just start dwindling because I get the feeling like not enough care and appreciation for that product is being shown. And, uh, yeah, so guys, I really do recommend that you check out Force Unleashed if you haven't already. It may not be your favorite Star Wars game. I know it's not mine. Like I said, I prefer many others, but it's definitely worth your time. I feel it is a pivotal moment in Star Wars. Um, you know, and I think they were really focused when they made this game. They really knew what they wanted uh, to make and create, and they created something great. Um, it's just too bad that a Force Unleashed 3 is basically impossible at this point. I would not expect it, especially because the original Expanded Universe has been uh, disbanded. So, you know, with that said, uh, a Force Unleashed 3 is pretty much impossible at the current point in time. So that's a real shame. But anyway, guys, I want to thank you all for watching. I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons. 
your continued support is much appreciated if you haven't subscribed uh, please do so you know what are you guys doing come on click that subscribe button i've got much more great content headed your way more reviews more retrospectives you name it will be here on this channel and guys i want to thank everyone for watching i'll see you next time